right, I'm here with my buddy Joaquin. Joaquin uh, has a very strong attraction to squirrels and bunny rabbits. And so in this video, we're going over some tips you can use if you have a dog that is reactive to squirrels and bunny rabbits. Now, we, were, we rented a couple uh, squirrels to help us out and they didn't show up. That's the whole point, is you can't tell squirrels what to do. So it makes it harder to practice this sort of thing. Uh, dogs also with a prey drive, we're really dealing with kind of a uh, primal instinct. So he is part terrier, which makes it a lot harder to help him dogs that have uh, a strong prey drive. Now, it also depends on what the prey is. Cats that are chill are not going to be chased as much as the cats that run. This is why the bunny rabbits, if you live in a place where the bunny rabbits, the bunny rabbit will freeze and you're like, that bunny rabbit is really brave. The bunny knows if I don't move, the dog can't see me. I twitch my ear, they'll see me right away. So we can do a couple things. We want to change the dog's emotional response. Let's say that there's a tr this tree right over here. And if you want to take maybe a couple steps on the yard so you're in the shade right there. And so let's say there's a squirrel up here. And so I'm gonna use my hand here to simulate the squirrel. Yes. So because of the logistics of filming this, it's a little bit harder. What I'd like to do is maybe be on that side. So the squirrel looks, is over here. Yes. He looks at the squirrel and I'm over here say, saying yes when he looks at the squirrel and holding a treat out. So if I'm Joaquim, I'm looking at the squirrel. I, I say yes from standing over here. I turn away to get that treat. What am I doing? I'm looking at the squirrel, then I'm hearing yes for looking at the squirrel. Yes means if I turn and look at my humans, I'm gonna get a treat, so I turn away and I get that reward. Now, if the squirrel is right here and it's running in circles, there's no way you're gonna be able to get him to do that. I use the sit as a test. Is a dog comfortable enough to sit or lie down? If not, if he won't sit, it probably means that that squirrel is too close. So I would walk five paces that way, ask him to sit again. So I want to be able to see the squirrel or the bunny rabbit, but not be so close that he can't contain himself. What we essentially want him to do is practice being near a bunny rabbit or a squirrel without chasing them and then having something happen that's nice. If he does this sort of thing, then you know you're doing a really good uh, distance because he's relaxed enough to sit down or, or lay down. So the idea is eventually he looks at the squirrel, you say yes, and then he turns away and he's getting a treat from there. So at first you're saying yes when I look at the squirrel. But after I do this enough, as Joaquim, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna look and look away, anticipating that treat. Once you get to that point, then you start marking looking away. So the first step, it's yes. The second step, it's yes. Marking when he looks. So he's looking at the bunny rabbit, the squirrel, he's choosing to turn away from it, and he's being rewarded for doing so. Now, once you get to the point where you can do this consistently, we're about 30, 25 paces away. Then I would move about five, a couple, three to five paces closer, practice again. But again, it depends on the squirrel. If you have a squirrel that's just kind of eating a nut and just sitting there, you probably can get a little bit closer. If it's a squirrel that's running around chasing another squirrel, you might have to move further away. Also something that's important to note, when it comes to dog behavior and dog training, training is not a linear process. It's not always constantly gonna be getting better. It's gonna go up, you're gonna have a bad day. You might get a squirrel that runs towards you. Well, that might spook you. So, uh, like I was mentioning, Clover Park is a good place to do this because the, the, the squirrels are pretty tame. But just to avoid squirrels that are playing together as a group because that's when they're going to have more motion. Now, let's say you get caught and you don't have the ability to do all this stuff. And there's some squirrels and you want to just get his attention or you have to walk by the squirrel. So let's say that right next to this, uh, in between these two palm trees, that there's a, a, a tree with squirrels. So what I could do, Joaquin, you could stay right there with the camera. Let's say we're walking down the street, um, and I'm going to walk you on the left, even though you're supposed to be on the right. So let's say we, we come, he sees some squirrels. I can say, Joaquin, find it. And as soon as his nose comes up, find it. Find it. So again, this is him practicing not going after the squirrel. Find it. And I'm able to walk him past the squirrels. Now again, if you're too close, go a little bit further away as you're doing this. This is a maintenance exercise. So if you get caught somewhere, you have the ability to get him uh, uh, not freaking out the squirrel. And you can grab these treats. Are, I can kind of crush them up into little pieces. I could also do something like this where I have like, if it's really strong, I might say, Joaquin, find it. Now he's got a whole bunch. This is helpful if you have a dog that's like reactive that's walking past you. But again, he's more interested in getting his treats. Sniffing is a displacement behavior. He's sniffing the ground, he's getting the treats, which is creating a positive emotional response. He's not looking at the squirrels, he's not practicing with the squirrels. Now in the meantime, 
Easier said than done, but we want to try to avoid having him around squirrels that are very high around, that are moving around a lot. That's going to help him practice the actual behavior you don't want. So uh, now one last little tip is these are tricky trainers. These are treats I like to use. Sit. Let's say the squirrel is moving. I can hold, squish this treat like a pancake and I can get him looking in whatever direction I want while he's chasing that, while that squirrel is running around. Now again, if he wants to go towards the squirrel, he's tense, his mouth is closed, he's not interested in treats, you're too close, move further away. But the idea is to find a place where you're actually going to see squirrels running around. Here, buddy. Come over here. And uh, so that you can have him practice being around the squirrels without chasing them. While, matter of fact, not only do I not, uh, am I not chasing him, I'm getting treats for just checking them out. And gradually you can collapse that distance. Now, I have not seen him around a squirrel, so again, it depends on his intensity level. And he's also lived in different parts of the country where he's seen different critters. It's LA, we're not gonna see as many squirrels, so this probably isn't gonna be as much of a problem, but it definitely was something I would work on. You wanna work on this, uh, we, we kind of look at this sort of activity as really basic. He's really not doing very much. If he's around squirrels and he wants to chase him, he's restraining himself, that is a very intense activity. So if that's the case, we wanna make sure that we are, hey, uh, that we're not, uh, what do you call it, uh, doing, practicing for too long. We, I call this the roller coaster. He just looks at like you stand there. If you're on a roller coaster, you're going through an intense emotion. So when you're doing this sort of thing, maybe practice for three, five minutes. Now, we have another little, we have construction going on. And I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but I can hear a, a, a leaf blower being run. A leaf blower, a crying baby, a beep, 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 a construction fight, people arguing. Those sort of sounds, we live in LA, we just filter out because it's such an urban place. Uh, but if, uh, uh, if he has that stuff going on while you're trying to do it, that's going to add something to the equation. So if you can, and you hear something like that going, walk further away, let him kind of relax, wait for the leaf blower to be done, and then come back practice or practice a different time. Don't, it's already challenging, so we want to uh, eliminate all sorts of external things that we can so we don't have that worry about uh, that trigger and response where maybe we were able to get five feet closer if it weren't for the leaf blower. All right, Joaquin, come here. Well, this is my buddy Joaquin, and these are some tips you can use if you have a dog that likes to chase squirrels and rabbits.